we have a, a ceremony coming up real soon here. But before we start, I would like to give Melody the microphone if someone would give it so she can introduce her guest. So who are your guests, uh, Melody? This is my sister, Becky, and my nephew, Jordan. Becky and, and Jordan. And my good friends, Rick and Julie. Rick and Julie. And my son, Robbie. Son, Robbie. Well, let's give them a, wor a warm welcome, everyone. <laughs> and who's this guy right here? You know my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. God bless you, Stan. It's wonderful to see you here. Is there anyone else here for the very first time? That's never... Okay, I see one hand. Um, can I get a deacon? And sir, could you just uh, stand up and introduce us, tell us what your name is, um, where you're from, and uh, how you found out about Redwood? Good, good morning, everybody. And my name is George Gorm, and uh, this is my first time getting here. George. And uh, frankly speaking, just three days ago, I just released from prison, and then to the help. Excuse me, you released from where? Prison. Prison. Yeah. Well, do you think we should let him in here, you guys? <laughs> How many people have been in prison before? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, that looks like almost, or maybe more than fifty percent. So you are welcome here, George. Thank you. And I encourage everyone to introduce yourself to George. He's come to us with a very good reputation from being spending his time behind the wall. And um, I just want to say you are so welcome here. Thank you. And uh, there are people here in this church that will support you, that love to minister in any way they can. So. Be sure to let us know what your needs are. Thank you. And uh, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> so George s set a record. I'm not kidding. This is serious. I've never had so many people <laughs> inquire to me about George. I'm serious. He's got, and I don't want to embarrass him, too much, but he's got a wonderful reputation from being uh, very giving and friendly and well liked. Even even his classification counselor gave us a glowing report. So if you don't take the time and get to know him, it's going to be your loss. I guarantee you, he's a good man, and we're so happy we're here that he's here with us. Amen. Amen. George, will you bite? <laughs> he said no. Okay. All right. So, baptism is a very special day. Sister Melody, I've seen such a wonderful, wonderful transformation in her life since she has committed herself to the Lord and worked and has made every effort to follow him and his commandments. And uh, I'll say, so, say this right now, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but Melody is not the most outgoing person. Amen? Right? Is that okay to say that? So this is big for her. It's the love of Christ that's in her that has motivated her to come forward and make a public display of her faith in Christ. She much, and I'm going to speak for you, she much rather just keep to herself and not have any attention. It's easier for her. And she feels more comfortable that way. But, being baptized is an ordinance of the church. We are commanded to be baptized. And she knows that. And in obedience and out of love in her heart, she came to me 
and asked me if I would baptize her. And of course, I said yes. And she came for three weeks, and we went through a baptismal course. And she did very well. And she didn't back out. I've asked her a couple things to do today. She goes, do I have to? I go, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, okay. And uh, so I'm going to start this introduction because I'd like everyone to make sure we're all on the same page about the meaning of water baptism. How many people have been baptized in the church before? By immersion. Not sprinkling, by immersion. Okay, good. Um, Brother Miles, Deacon Miles? Yes, boss. Where are you? Over oh, right here. Oh, there you are. Okay. So, for the, for the people that are visiting us, Deacon Miles used to be on the radio. Catch this now. Can I get a traffic report, please? The traffic report for the Seattle area. Look for a wide road to the barbecue pit. <laughs> if you want a narrow path with Jesus, it's a lot better ride. <laughs> How about a weather report? A weather center forecast for the Seattle, SeaTac area. Look for windy, gusty, rainy winds, but it's always warm and dry on the inside with Jesus. Amen. Okay. So I cannot, yeah, give him a hand. With him possessing that type of gift, I can't help but not ask him to be a part of the service with me. Uh, Deacon Miles and I go way back. And this church was actually brought to both of us back in 2002. That's right. When we were both in jail together. That's right. I, I did time. And in, re in, in our quest to get our lives right the Lord worked in our lives in such a way and gave us a vision and right now you are participating in that vision amen whoever heard of a felony pastor before and a felony congregants before only the Lord amen his and mercy endureth forever he ordered our steps we just obeyed him and so I just want to say I love you all with the love of the Lord. And I'm so happy that you have come today and are participating in this service with me, with us, with this family, because we are a family. That's right. Water baptism. What is water baptism? The word baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse or dip. To baptize something then means to completely submerge it in a liquid. That's why we have this here. In we, a don't we, don't, we do not believe in sprinkling. We believe in drowning. <laughs> yeah, the old guy's got to die. A baptism means to be submerged completely like a sponge. You ever get a, a sponge that's so full of liquid that you can't even touch it without it just oozing out the liquid? That's what a baptism is, a water baptism. Go ahead. In a biblical sense, to baptize a person in water means to put a person completely under the water, then immediately raise them up or her again. I put that word immediately so she wouldn't back out. <laughs> According to the Bible, water baptism is a symbolic act whereby a Christian identifies with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Water baptism is a public profession of a person's repentance and faith in Jesus Christ and a way of giving outward testimony to an inward work of God. She's not getting paid to do this. She's making a testimony of her loyalty and her love for her Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. So much so that she's willing to make an outward public confession so the world will know that she's accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Amen. She's not ashamed of the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. However, she's got the power of the Lord to protect her from all of that, and she knows that. So she's not yes. only making a public confession, she's doing it before, before all of heaven and hell. And she's making a bold step because her Lord commanded her to do it. Did we finish? What does water baptism signify? When God baptizes you into Christ, you become a new creation in your spirit. So that's, you notice that says when God baptizes you. It doesn't say when J Pastor James does. Okay? It's God that has baptized her, the Father, into the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Amen. right. Because Not before you, before, well, I'll let you finish. Go ahead. You become a new creation in your spirit. Not in your body, flesh. Your body remains corruptible until the resurrection. So what's that, what's that talking about is all of us are three parts. We all have a body. We all have a soul. And we all have a spirit. If you're born again Christian, the Bible teaches us that your flesh, your body remains here and your soul and spirit go on to live in eternity for life with Jesus Christ and Amen. God the Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. But before that, it says, you become a new creation in what? In your spirit. Your body doesn't change, but your soul does, and your spirit does. All of a sudden, for me, when this happened, Everything that used to be important to me was no longer important. And all the things that were never important to me all of a sudden became very important. It was a total transformation. Just like Melody, she wants to do everything our Lord tells us to do. We want to be pleasing to God and be obedient to our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Your body remains corruptible until the resurrection, John 6, 39 and 40. But something inside changes. Your heart is washed clean by the blood of Jesus, and your spirit is quickened, made alive by the Holy Spirit. Now You now have the ability to communicate with God, hear his voice, love and obey him, overcome sin, and walk out your salvation by faith. Amen. So I put that little note down below just to clarify because we're doing a water baptism but this verse is talking about a spiritual baptism. Amen? Amen. They're separate. Don't get confused. Being so ba a, bap a spiritual baptism is, go ahead brother, read that note. The note at the bottom, being baptized into Christ means identifying with Christ's death and resurrection and being raised to a new life. That's her identity. Where her faith remains. Identifying. With the death. Burial and resurrection. Without a resurrection. We don't have any faith. We'd be fools to follow someone. A God that doesn't. That g Jesus is alive. That's right. And so now we're identifying with his death. His burial. And his new life. That's right. Coming up out of the water represents and identifies. There's nothing magic here. It's just symbolic. It's just identifying with that act. Do you know his crucifixion changed the whole world? Have you ever heard of A.D.? The year of A.D.? Have you ever heard of B.C.? What's that all about? It's about Jesus. The world recognized, not like it does now, but at one time when Christ was crucified, he split time. Everyone before his death looked forward in faith to his cross, to his salvation, and everybody after him is looking back. He's the pinnacle. 
Without Jesus, we're lost. That's right. Forget about everything else. Forget about your bills. Forget about your relationship. Forget about your job. Start thinking about Jesus and our relationship with him. Because he loves us all in a manner that is not discriminatory at all. When you go to Jesus, you don't have to have a resume that says, this is what I've done, Jesus. You know what he'd say? So what? Where's your heart? That's what I'm looking at. And I'm bringing that up for her. Her heart is for the Lord. That's right. And that was imparted unto her from that man right there. Yeah, you. So what does water baptism signify? Therefore, water baptism symbolically identifies us as the new creations in Christ. By going down in the water, we illustrate so just that... Let me stop you just for a minute. You notice it says it, it identifies us as new creations in Christ. It does not make us new creations in Christ. Water baptism does not give you salvation. All it's doing is allowing you to profess your faith before everyone. So don't get tangled up in thinking that you've got to be baptized in order to be saved. It's just an act of obedience. We'll talk about salvation here in a minute. Go ahead, brother. By going down in the water, we illustrate that our old man is dead to sin and buried by faith in Christ. As a result, we are free from our old master, Satan. By being raised up out of the water, we show that our new man is raised by the Spirit and made alive by faith in Christ. So you have an old man and you have a new man when you're born again. So what are you talking about, Pastor James? So I used to be someone else. I used to love drugs. I used to steal. Used to be very promiscuous. And and I wouldn't stop. That was my old guy. That's what I lived for. And I was a man full of pride. Everything was about me. If you couldn't help me, or you couldn't help me, then I didn't want nothing to do with you. If I could get what I needed from you, then you were my friend. Very self-centered and very selfish. And then I met Jesus. And I became born again. And I got a new man. Yeah, the old guy was still there, but I didn't want nothing to do with him. I wanted to, I wanted to walk my life out according to my new man. That's being born again. Born from above. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, regenerated my spirit. I still have my old nature, and I have my new nature now. And so thus comes the battle. Good angel, bad angel. Talking at me, trying to get me to do the things that each, uh, each old man and new man wanted me to do. So I had a battle. But now I had power. I had the ability to overcome and say no to the old man and say yes to the new man, which before I, kn before I knew Christ, I couldn't do that. I just give in to the old man. I do everything, it, whatever self-centeredness and selfishness that I wanted, I would do. Now I, now I have to do what the Lord wants me to do. That's the point I'm trying to make about the old man and the new man. Go ahead. Being raised up out of the water, we show that our new man is raised by the Spirit and made alive by faith in Christ. Since our new master is the Lord Jesus, we commit to walk in righteousness, not by our old ways and fleshly habits, but by our new life in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling our spirit. Do you all know that, right? When you become born again, the Holy Spirit actually comes and indwells you. Amen. He's known as the comforter, the counselor. 
He will lead, guide, and direct you if you let him. God is a gentleman. He will never go against your own free will. If you w- if your will says no, then God says okay. Do what you. That's not what I said to do, but it's all on us to do and change our will. That our, how we direct our lives and live our lives. Remember, I was talking about a resume. How we conform our will to the will of God reveals what's inside us. My flesh is saying, I want to do this. I want, I want to go back to that cocaine. But my spirit says, no, don't go back. It's so much better now. Follow the Lord. He'll help you. He'll strengthen you. Amen. Learn to say no. It's really that simple. No. I ain't doing it. No. I love the Lord more than I love that way of life. That's right. As a matter of fact, old man, get down on the ground and I'm going to step on your neck and I'm going to break it. And I'm going to kill my old man. Why? Because if I don't, he'll kill me. Go ahead, brother. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Romans 8.11. Amen. Is baptism necessary for salvation? I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit, but here we're going to cover it again. The Bible tells us that there is a baptism necessary for salvation. However, it is not water baptism. That's referring to the baptism in Christ. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to separate baptism in Christ from water baptism. A person must be spiritually baptized into Christ in order to be saved. For all of you who were baptized into Christ into a spiritual union with Christ, the anointed, have clothed ourselves with Christ. That is, you have taken on his characteristics and values. Galatians 3.27. To take on the characteristics and the values of Jesus Christ. That, That matches what the new man wants. Amen. Go ahead. At the moment of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, salvation is received. Many people insist that water baptism is essential for salvation. However, this is incorrect. You see, salvation is and always has been about faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is always about faith in Christ. That's right. Don't get it mixed up. Can you be saved and go to heaven without ever being baptized? Yes, you can. But being baptized is an uh, uh, act of obedience. That's right. Go ahead. You must be baptized into Christ in order to be saved. However, this is not the same as being baptized in water. Water baptism is purely an outward sign of God's cleansing work in a person's heart and is therefore meaningless without a prior spiritual baptism into Christ. So you could never accept Christ. And you could come up here and get baptized, but it wouldn't mean a thing. Hey, you just take a bath. <laughs> okay. Who should be water baptized? Water baptism is only appropriate for those who have repented, changed their mind of their sins, and believed in Jesus with all their heart. Disciples of Jesus in the New Testament church were baptized to proclaim their total allegiance and commitment to Jesus, regardless of the consequences. For a first century Christian, this meant identifying with Christ even unto death, since many of them faced severe persecution. Amen. I want to talk about repentance a little bit, but I think I'm going to run out of time, so that'll be for another day. But if any of you are not saved and you're thinking about salvation or accepting Christ, you have to realize that you're a sinner 
and you need to repent from your sin because Jesus came to take the sin of the world away. How did he do that? He was the perfect atoning sacrifice. That's right. He walked this earth and never sinned. They called him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's the right. Lamb. Have you ever seen the baby lambs? They're so pure and so white and so innocent. They wouldn't harm anything. Jesus was the Lamb of God. And when he went to that cross, he sacrificed his body, his life, for all of us and shed his blood and went to the grave and was buried and was resurrected again. And it's that act that we're mem memorializing and remembering and um, professing to identify with. Amen. Like I said earlier, if there was no resurrection, we'd all be a bunch of fools. But there is a resurrection. What does that mean? That means there's life. New life. Not just for eternity, but for now as well. Amen. Is it okay to be baptized more than once? I've been asked this question before. And uh, this is this is how I see it. Go ahead, brother. A new believer should be baptized once in obedience to the commandment of Jesus. Some people, however, may have been baptized earlier in their life, such as in the case of an infant baptism, without understanding the significance of baptism. Or perhaps they did not truly repent and receive Jesus as their Savior, in such cases, it is very important to be rebaptized as a public confession of faith. Also, a backslider, prodigal son, who has returned to Jesus, may want to be baptized again, which is appropriate, as long as he understands it is not necessary for his salvation and will not make him any more spiritual than someone who has been baptized once. Remember that water baptism itself does not save anyone. Rather, water baptism is a public, outward demonstration of a person's repentance and saving faith. Yeah. How many people have been married or are married? Raise your hand. Okay, then this should be widely accepted. We all understand what loyalty is. Amen? Amen. This public confession is an act of loyalty to our Lord and Savior. I'm not doing this because I want something from you, Lord. I am baptizing because I love you. You've commanded me to do this, and I am loyal to you. Amen. I want the world to know about you and me. I'm willing to do that. The conclusion. Water baptism is a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Although water baptism in itself does not save, it does identify us with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. When God baptizes you into Christ, you become part of the body of Christ, which is the worldwide family of God. Thus, water baptism is not a meaningless ritual or even a mere duty. It is an awesome privilege for the children of God. Isn't that nice? So, when it says you become a part of the body of Christ, the body of Christ is here. Amen. In the biblical term, we refer to the church members as Christ's body. And so, the church is worldwide. Amen? Amen. Worldwide. So, 
you're being baptized into a really big family. And you're actually part of the church. Part of Christ's body. He's the head. The church is the body. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, you might have noticed by your bulletins, I've um, put down Stan Montgomery as a speaker. Before I introduce him, I want to say a few things. Parents. I've often noticed there's nothing like a mother's love for a child. It's almost unsurpassed. It's powerful. It's mighty. I've seen mothers moved in such a way because of their child, emotionally, spiritually, and going to great lengths to whatever they have to do to help their child. The love of the mother is incredible. And God honors a mother's prayer. I know some of you were raised in the church and had a praying mother. And that's the reason why you're here now. Because your mother had been praying for you. And God honors her prayer. But I want to talk about the love of a father. The Bible teaches us that the father, the husband, the man, is the spiritual head of his household. There's not two heads. There's one head. You ever heard of a two-headed monster? That's what you'll have if there's two heads. And as, a, as the spiritual head of the family, of the household, there are certain responsibilities in that role. And I failed miserably at mine. But by God's grace, he brought me back. Only by his grace. It's not anything I did. He did it. Brother Stan, now that he's father, loves his daughter. And he wants to lead his daughter in the correct way. In a godly way. Which means he denied himself in the things that he wants to do for the sake of his daughter. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor, Bo Pastor James? Stan brought Melody here. And he's encouraged her. I don't know her whole history, but I know that this is not her first time in church. I know that she's had other experiences before. But her father brought her here. Why? Because God told him to. And I've seen the Spirit of God all over this woman. I've seen God raise her up and speak to her. I've seen the enemy come against her and try to discourage her. But she came back. She, she continues her pursuit of God. And she's here today by the will of God, but by an obedient father who loves his daughter very much. I just want to acknowledge him because he's a good example for all of us that need examples of what a father is. Stan is involved in another ministry. And on Saturdays, he's supposed to be cooking, from what I understand. And he loves it. He loves that ministry. And he goes out and feeds homeless people. And he gives his heart to it. But he set that aside so that his daughter could come and be a part of this church. Stan, come on up, brother. <laughs> May I get a microphone? Don't let them off the hook easy, you guys. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the calling and the ability to repent 
Thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness. Without either one, would there be no hope for each of us? So, what does it take for each of us to believe that Jesus came and gave his life for us that we might have e eternal life? We find that in the world, we have the only assurance of eternal death with Satan. That's not a very pretty picture. <clears throat> we have the presence of the Holy Spirit and eternal life with our Creator, our Creator, and all that involves. So we would ask the question, why do we attempt to gamble with our soul's destiny? We see what Satan's destiny is for us, and that's death and eternal damnation. Do we really want to be part of his fallen lot? And besides, what could we ever say to our Creator on Judgment Day when we have the, while we have the opportunity to read his holy word. His manual of instruction is with the Holy Spirit keeping us on how to be born again. <clears throat> As we've already heard, we were born by the water from our mother when And now he calls us, our creator, to be born again spiritually. In John 3, we read about a Pharisee named Nicodemus. There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him at night and said, Rabbi, you know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. And Jesus replied, I assure you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he asked, but how can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him, can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? And Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whoever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whoever is born of the Spirit is spirit. So do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound. But you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So Nicodemus, Nicodemus asked, how can these things be? And Jesus said, are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? I assure you, we speak what we know, and we testify that we what we have seen, but you do not accept our testimony. If I have told you about things that happen on earth and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about things of heaven? <clears throat> no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. For God so loved the world, in this way he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So we examine our own hearts. And what is the Holy Spirit showing us? He was, Pastor James was talking about 
being baptized again. I've been baptized two times, one when I was a youth and one a couple years ago. The Lord quickened my heart to be baptized again. And I questioned him on it. And he says, be baptized. And so I and another friend went forward and requested it. And I thought everything was okay in my heart. And so I was looking eagerly for it. And when it came my time, the pastor at that time said, there's a blockage. And I says, I was thinking, what blockage are you talking about? And the pastor said, prayed silently. And he said, what is the first thing that the Lord shows you? And I told him, and I was embarrassed for a moment. And then I related, and it was something that I had been dealing with all my life. And I thought I had to live with it. But I was freed at that moment. That evil spirit left me. You know, God is true. If we think we have to live with something that is not right, God can remove it. But he has to give us understanding. He has to bring us to that point. And God is faithful. This is a precious moment for myself, and most of all, it's precious unto God, a melody's baptism. For the word says that be baptized and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus was baptized by John. Why? John says, I don't need to be baptized by you. He recognized him as the Messiah. And Jesus said, it, it becomes each of us to fulfill all righteousness. And we begin to find when the Holy Spirit comes that we begin to understand spiritually. The word says that man says it's foolishness. But man is controlled by self. And self is controlled by Satan. He's in the world. We have worldly pleasures. We have worldly desires and things that we can overcome, even if we try. But through Jesus Christ, he is our deliverer. And thank you for listening. We're looking for rebirth. We're looking for hope for each one of us because God has come. And may all praise and glory be to him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Stan. We have a, a special request uh, for some music which we are going to, actually I have it as before, okay.
So do you want to tell everybody what this song means to you? I speak Jesus. I'm not sure really how to explain the feeling that I get when I sing this song. Um, <laughs> yeah. You'll get the more melody. <laughs> she doesn't like the bright light. So this song speaks. Uh, we're not going to have slides for this at this point in time, but <clears throat> this song speaks to speaking the name of Jesus, Yeshua, over our lives, over our lives, over the lives of our families, over the lives of our friends, over the lives of people we don't even know. And it's, it's such a powerful, powerful message. Uh, it was brought to me by one friend, and then... It wasn't maybe a week or two later that Melody also asked, asked to have it done. And so. <clears throat> the beginning. speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, let me hear you. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. What a beautiful song, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Do you know the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus? There's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. I would just like everyone just to give the Lord a hand clap. Because the Spirit of God dropped down during that number, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. There's healing and there's deliverance. Amen. Just being in the presence of God. Yes. When that presence comes upon you, welcome it. Don't reject it. Let it come. Let it flow. Amen. Oh, he's in the house. Yeah. And I want to acknowledge him right now. God bless you, Lord. We love you. Thank you for seeing us today. Amen. Well, it's getting close to drowning time. <laughs> Could you um, stand up and face the, the people? You need a microphone? Okay. Um, there was a microphone up here. It's disappeared. Okay. Thank you, brother. So, so I have a question. Test. For, for Sister Melody. Yes, sir. So proud of you. You're doing great. You, you don't need to be in a hurry. I didn't want to fall. Yeah, you don't need to be in a hurry. Just relax. Do it. Okay. Could you tell me? Could you tell the brothers and the sisters what Jesus means to you? Um. Okay, um, oh, now I can't see anybody. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Je Jesus is breaking all my strongholds. He's, he's 
he's there for me every step of the way. And um, I would like to say that when um, that when um, I first accepted the Lord when I was 16, and and then I did get um, baptized in a river, but I didn't quite understand what baptism was all about at the time. I was just going with the motions of what everybody was doing that had gotten baptized up in the mountain. And um, <coughs> and so that's why I want to, um, I understand it more. I'm older and I understand it more. Um, but I did, um, when I got home a few days later, you know, I was still doing worldly things because I didn't understand how it all worked at the time. And like I had like, um, do you remember uh, 45 records, are there, there are 45s and 33s, and yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're going okay, way so back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I had like a pile of 45s, and they were all worldly music, and the Lord came to me one day and said, he, he said, you need to get rid of them, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand, why do you want me to get rid of my records, my music, you know, and and he go and he goes. I just want you to get rid of them and start listening to Christian music. And the Lord um, found help help me find find on the radio. Um, KCMS just started up uh, one hundred five point three, and um, I started listening to Christian music. But in the meantime, I hadn't thrown the records away yet. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give them to my friend because she doesn't have money for stuff like that. I want to be able to give her something nice or whatever and the lord was like no i want you to get rid of them i don't want her to listen to them either i don't want you know anybody else to listen to them records you know and i kind of argued with him a little bit because because it was like yeah but this cost a lot of money and she really could use them and when i threw him away and told her what happened she was so mad at me <laughs> 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 you know and um that's just the start of what i, I started as a new babe in Christ, and then um, as I got older, I walked away for quite a while from the Lord, and and then um, when I started having children, I was like, I want my kids to know the Lord. I want them to be able to um, see what I see in the Lord, and so I started going back to church and um, rededicated my life again, and, and, um, and then um, I just wanted to read... Um, a couple verses that I like. Um, it's it's so found in Psalms 27, chapter 1, and chapter 14 is what I want to read. Um, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, is the strength of my life. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, okay. The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall be afraid and then 14 is wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart Amen. so Amen. i Amen. just wanted to she yeah. did good didn't she <laughs> thank you okay yeah i'll take that one <laughs> so we have um chad and doug are going to help you. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. Lord, increase the temperature so it's not too cold. Is that enough water? Yes, that's plenty of water. So here, uh, go ahead, Doug. And I told told everybody I was going to stand back and watch. Uh, you, you can look at the monitors, right? And so we're real interested in getting this recorded. It will be on YouTube. But if, if some of you want a picture, close-up you can come up here, even though it was spoken that you shouldn't. I want you to come up here and be feel free to take a picture. But see that shelf right, I mean that pole, and there's a camera up there? That's the one we're looking at right now. So if you can stay out of the way of the camera and take a picture from the sides, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, you're in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before, before she goes down, the water cold? Yeah, a little bit. Sorry. 
Then the 11 disciples went away. The 11 disciples, went, I'm coming to you out of Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. That's us. We saw him today. And we worshipped him. But, the verse goes on to say, some doubted. You just take that for what it means. And Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, he's speaking to the disciples here. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is referred to in the Christian doctrine as the Great Commission. This applies to all of us. She's a disciple. She has come to this church. She comes to the Bible study. She comes to the services. And we're making her a disciple. And now she's making disciples. Just out of her testimony. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, um, Go ahead and have a seat. Hold her on. We got a cushion for her to sit on because there's a bar that was helping with that. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be fine. You got plenty of room. Sarah, thank you. Now with you. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Have you committed your life to him? Yes, I have. By the command of Jesus Christ, I baptize you right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You're going to go down in the water and you're going to come up and you're going to be experiencing your new life. Amen? Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Come on up. That was pretty immediate. <laughs> He's got a towel. He's got a towel. Don't worry about water on the carpet. It'll all dry. So I'd like to ask you all, awesome. you all are invited to stay after the service is over. We're going to have some food and more celebration in the name of Jesus. And um, normally we set up tables here, but with the baptismal in the way and it being full of water, all of the chairs are going to be moved further back. So if you could, uh, Deacon Miles is in charge. And he's going to, he's going to, don't start yet. He's going to direct everyone. If you want to help, he'll, he'll put you to work and you can help set up the tables. But our policy is there's a serving room back here. There's food in the serving room. And our visitors and the poor mobility and the females get to go first. Us men go last. Amen? So, Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray over this food that we're about to receive. We ask that you bless it, that it would go to the nourishment of our bodies to give us strength and energy to do your will. We thank you, Lord, for everything. And I just heard the Spirit say to me, and I don't know what this means. Is there anyone that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. 
and would like to know him. Just raise your hand. Okay, Lord. Pray with me. Repeat after me. Everyone, please. I don't usually get this boxing, but I feel like I'm being directed by the Lord here. Dear Father God, Father I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner, and I repent from my sins. I want you, Jesus, in my life. I bow before you. I believe in your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And I look to you as my Savior. Please save me. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for saving me. I take all of my sin, knowing that you died for them, and I repent from them, which means to turn away from the ways of the world and the way of sin. And I want you to take over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you prayed that prayer? Know that you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit and salvation. And please come tell me, and I'll pray with you. Okay, we're done. <laughs>